The NFL Draft for 2024 is over. I watched all three days, every single pick. And I knew that the Buffalo Bills needed to put together some pieces of the puzzle that we lost in the offseason for various reasons. And I think they were able to do it. I think it was a very good draft for the Buffalo Bills. And the only way I thought they would be able to do it is to trade down. I wanted them to trade down bad out of the first round. I didn't know they were going to trade twice. I don't care who they traded with. If it helped the Bills, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if you trade with the Chiefs, if you trade with the Patriots, maybe trade with the Patriots, or the Dolphins, whoever. It doesn't matter because if you're helping your team get better, better that's what you need to do. So they were able to trade down. They got some additional picks that helped our team. And then they trade down again and got some more picks that helped our team. So um, the first need, especially with, with um, Stefan Diggs leaving the team to go to Houston, they needed an ex-wide receiver. And after trading down, Keon Coleman was the man that needed to be drafted. I, I know um, a lot of people liked A.D. Mitchell, but so many off the, off the field question marks that they went ahead and went with Keon Coleman. <laughs> I'm glad they did. I like Keon Coleman. I think he knows how to get open downfield. He's got great hands, great leaping ability. Um, his speed may be his only question mark because he's just a tide bit slower. But come on, he knows how to get open. And he can catch the ball. That's more important to me. And he's young, very young. And and I didn't know this before the draft, but he's pretty funny, too, in his press conference, talking about where he got his jacket and making sure if he could get some cookies. Um, just, uh, I think he's going to be a great addition to the Buffalo Bills. <clears throat> now, the next pick, we needed a safety. And every year I watch the NFL Combine, I fall in love with one player coming out of the Combine that I didn't really know much about before the Combine. And this year, the player was Cole Bishop. He had a combine that was unbelievable. His speed was fantastic. You could see his coverage ability. You could see all the shuttles and different things that they were doing. He was top notch. And coming out of Utah, I knew that we needed somebody that could, could stop a tight end. So we had inside information on whether Kincaid thought that Bishop could do that. And Kincaid actually said Bishop was really, really good at covering a tight end. So that he shut him down in practice. So I'm very happy that we have Cole Bishop joining the team. He's going to be a fantastic player for the Buffalo Bills. The next player is Dwayne Carter. I, I felt like they needed one more defensive tackle. And Carter was definitely the best player available on, on my board at that point to play on the defensive line. And talk about smart and leadership. He's Mr. Duke, three years captain, three years. I've never heard of that before. And and a finalist for the academic Heisman. So we've got a really intelligent defensive target man, Diamond, in the middle of our field now that... Um, He's really going to gain from Ed Oliver and Daquan Jones and learning from them. And he wants to be a sponge and learn from them. And I think he may be able to teach them a few tricks too, even though he's coming out of college. So um, great to have a leader and an intelligent man there in the middle of the field. So I'm really happy with those three picks. Um, the next pick, you know, the Bills needed a third running back. A lot of people thought they were going to go with a bigger running back, like a goal line running back, but that's not really been what the Bills have been known for as they got Naheem Hines um, in that trade a couple years ago with the Colts. And um, I really feel like Ray Davis is, is going to be a great player coming out of the backfield. He catches passes. I mean, seven touchdown passes received. That's unbelievable um, in college. And I think Ray Davis is a great pick for us. I think he's going to be our second running back. Um, and if you wanted the goal line guy and that fits better, they signed Frank Gore Jr. after the draft. 
and we'll see what he could do. But for now, Josh Allen is still our, our goal line running back. And I've been telling everybody, we need a center and a linebacker with the next picks. I've been saying it over and over again, and everybody's been on me. And guess what? I was right. I didn't think that uh, Cedric Van Pran Granger was going to be available out of Georgia because i have been looking at the Iowa, or not Iowa, um, Wisconsin, um, Burrotini. And I thought he was going to be the center they would draft, but he was taken earlier in the draft than I thought that he was supposed to be taken. So that made Georgia's uh, center slide down. And I guess they just switched places, but I would I thought that the Georgia center was too good to be available still at this point, but that's who they ended up getting. And what a great pick for the Buffalo Bills. The guy's mammoth. And now we don't have to, to look and see if um, McGovern can play center. We can leave him at guard or maybe move him to guard. I mean, I think I really feel much better about where we stand at our center position now. Um, if McGovern beats him out, fantastic. If um, then, uh, if Van Pran beats uh, McGovern out, fantastic. I'd, I'd rather have Van Pran be the center and McGovern stay at guard because that looked really good last year with Dawkins. And I, I don't want to mess that up. So, um, and then we move on to the linebacker. Now, when you get to this point in the draft, really need to start worrying about somebody that can help us on special teams too. Linebackers can really do that, especially with this new kickoff rule. I think you need a fast linebacker. And um, Eddie Olofosio is the man they went with. I think he he's, he's really looks like a fantastic cover linebacker, which is what they needed. We needed a cover linebacker. It would have been nice if we'd have had a cover linebacker or someone that was a bit better at a cover linebacker last year when we took on the Chiefs. Um, hopefully, I have to put all that pressure on him, but hopefully he can come in show that he's a good cover linebacker and give us some special teams play. And it's exciting to see where he can join the team. Now, uh, we needed one more pass rusher. So in the next in the next pick, they went with Javon Solomon. Um, smaller school coming out of uh, Troy. And he's really fast. I think the, and he has a ton of sacks in college, just a ton of them, unbelievable amount. And I think the only reason that he fell to the fifth round was he's a little undersized, but he's going to learn from Von Miller how to use his technique and his bend to, to get that pass rush. Now, will he play this year? You know, we hope so, but I think Cam's going to come in to this year and uh, play as well, Cameron Klein. And uh, if Cameron Klein moves up, and and doesn't matter to me, if, if uh, Javon Solomon... Is still learning on the practice squad for a year, and Cameron Klein can come in and get the job done, or or they both come up and play. We'll see what happens, but definitely a guy with speed, a guy that knows how to get to the quarterback, a guy that can help us on special teams as well. So really good. And speaking of special teams, we need a guy to replace Hardy. Is our punt return kick returner, um, and there's there's a couple guys on the team it might be able to do that. And maybe even Coleman or, or Davis can do that, but I, I'm not sure if they're even, you know, do that kind of thing. But I know that Hardy replaced by Hardy is a fantastic decision because Daquan Hardy nickel corner, which is great to have a backup um, behind um, Taron Johnson. And, you know, if, he, if, if Hardy can do that, then great. And then his punt return ability he had two touchdowns, this year for Penn State and punt returns really gave him some some a great weapon as a punt returner. So um, I think Daquan Hardy, especially the sixth round, that's a fantastic pick. And um, then we oh I skipped one. We have two tackles that um, the Bills drafted that both look like they're going to be guys that need a little work. Um, Tylen Grable actually was a quarterback, moved to tight end. Now he's a tackle. Um, may take some time. I mean, we're talking about sixth and seventh round picks here. 
that may take some time to become a dominant offensive lineman and, and to play in the NFL. Let's see, maybe he can move to guard. You know, <laughs> the guy's been moving around so much in positions during college, who knows? But um, I, I, I think he can, can really be a, a good player down the road. Let's see what happens with that. And then Travis Clayton, guy hasn't played one down of football in his life. So it'll be a great story if somehow the Bills can turn him into something. But the man is enormous. I think he's six foot seven, three hundred pounds, and and runs a four five, something like that. I mean, unbelievable from England. And just his in, in his uh, different intangible or different things as far as looking like a, a player. And uh, if he doesn't work in the NFL, he may become a professional wrestler. Who knows? That accent's fantastic from England, by the way. Um, but I, I can't tell you much about what he's going to bring to the team because he's never played a down of football. And I can't believe we drafted someone that's never played a down of football, but um, I guess the Bills saw what he could do or what he possibly could do in his workouts. So let's see what happens there. Now, um, so you filled in a bunch of pieces of the puzzle. Wide receiver, safety, center. Um, we We needed this stuff. We needed another running back. We needed... You know, because a lot of guys left the team. This whole wall was full of current players on the team autograph pictures. Now I got a whole row that's missing down at the bottom because so many guys left the team um, in this offseason, mostly due to our salary cap problems. Um, but, you know, that is what it is. We don't really, that's for a whole nother video why we had to replace so many players. But, I'm really happy with the puzzle put together by being, um, I know we always say top player available, but you've got to worry about position of need and then the top player at that position of need is what I think it really is. And, you know, I think if Cole Bishop hadn't been available, then maybe they would have taken a, a defensive tackle in that round. I mean, it's just things that, that are needed, but they ended up with Dwayne Carter at defensive tackle. And Cole Bishop, I felt... In my opinion, best safety on the board. Best safety in the draft. Um, and we needed somebody that can cover a tight end. And he is going to do that for us. And I can't wait to see Cole Bishop play as a Buffalo Bill. I can't wait to see Keon Coleman play. I can't wait to see Ray Davis, Cedric Van Pran, all these guys. Training camp, come on, let's go. Let's get here already. But... A great draft for the Bills. I'd, I'd grade it a B. Um, and the only reason it's a B is it, it's hard to become an A if you don't have really high draft picks and can get the, the top quality players. So before the draft even started, I don't think an A was possible. Um, and I, I think the fact that they filled in so many positions of need and are going to help me hopefully fill up this wall again really made it a, a really good draft for the Buffalo Bills. And next year, they've got a lot of picks. So hopefully when I'm making this pick, this video next year, we can see that they even had a better draft next year. So with that, I say go Bills. And always remember, God loves you. And so do I.